On November 22, 1994, the Sega Saturn was released in Japan. I had been reading all about the device in game magazines like Next Generation and Electronic Gaming Monthly, an epic bit of story that ranged from difficult arcade translations, questionable design choices, and the coming of a new competitor ready to set the world on fire. Of course, none of that stuff meant anything to me. All I cared about was that a new Sega system was coming, and I was going to own it day one. I had been a regular arcade dweller at the time, and Sega's explosive success in 3D polygon games had captured my attention and I was incredibly excited to have a chance to play these games at home. I had been going through a rough time in my life as well, and the prospect of Saturn ownership gave me something positive to concentrate on during that stretch. I worked hard, saved my money, and got ready for the day the Saturn would be available. I prepared myself the best I could, trying to get an idea of pricing from import shops over the phone and from game magazines that covered import news. I got a rough estimate of the machine being $400 to $500 at the Japanese launch, and because I had experience importing PC Engine, Super Famicom, and Mega Drive games from Japan, I knew to expect a premium to be added on top of that, not to mention the added cost of shipping. Back in those days, with no access to the ease of the internet, buying stuff had been a hassle. I lived in a small town in the mountains of Virginia, so the nearest import shop was a good 5 to 8 hours worth of driving away. Through the process of elimination, I had whittled down the import shops often seen in the back of gaming magazines to a few companies I trusted and used regularly. Since I didn't have a credit card, the only way to get these import games and systems was either by sending in cash or a personal check, or by using COD, or what was known as collect on delivery, basically handing the UPS guy a pile of cash for your package. Despite all of my attempts, not a single one of the shops I used would commit to a price. While I was reading Saturn articles trying to find out what kind of price I'd have to cover for it, the big day came surprisingly fast. To my utter dismay, I was told by every single import shop I used that the only way I could get the machine was in a bundle. Not a single place I used or knew about sold just the system and allowed you to buy whatever games you wanted. This was a terrible turn of events, basically meaning I was about to end up with games I didn't want, and worse, maybe even couldn't play due to the language. There had been five games available in Japan the day the system was launched. I of course had known about and wanted Virtua Fighter, a game I loved in the arcade and one of the biggest reasons I had been drawn to the platform in the first place. There was also Myst, a conversion of the mega popular PC adventure game. Since I had not owned a PC in my youth, I had only heard of the game and never actually played it, so it held no place with me other than a mild curiosity. There was also Tama, a puzzle game with perhaps the greatest subtitle in the history of gaming, Adventurous Ball and Giddy Labyrinth. I had absolutely no clue what this game even was, much less any desire to actually own it. Wan Chai Connection was an adventure game featuring heavy use of digitized images and full motion video, and I again had no clue what it was or knew anything about it. The last game was a tabletop Mahjong entry that had a cool bit of cover art, but not the kind of thing I wanted on my brand new 32-bit console. I ended up with Virtua Fighter and Tama with my system after a bit of negotiation, with that bundle still costing me well over $700 with shipping. I had a Sega Saturn in hand, however, and the sticker shock wore off rather quickly. I was so excited to get the system hooked up to my television, and the first time I heard that magical Sega Saturn startup jingle was truly awesome. Heck man, I was even blown away by the simple dashboard animations that the hardware produced. A texture mapped starship flying around a moving star field to entertain you while you played music CDs and such. The real prize, of course, had been Virtual Fighter, 
I was not your typical American gamer even back then, and I had been absolutely enthralled by the arcade game that was released a year earlier in 1993. Game magazines had already been complaining about lower polygon counts, glitches, and a general consensus that it wasn't going to be arcade perfect. All this failed to dull my enthusiasm for it, and I was rewarded for that faith because despite some cutbacks from the source material, Virtua Fighter on the Saturn was everything I'd hoped it'd be. It played perfectly, and those sharp, flat-shaded polygons still looked great to my eyes. The most important part was that the developer AM2 had the game firing on all cylinders during gameplay, and that's all that really mattered. The polygon glitching you often hear about was during the replays, an eyesore to be sure, but not something you needed to worry about messing with your fights. I spent months perfecting my techniques among the various combatants, until more games begin a regular flow in early 1995. Bring yeah! As we all know, the Sega Saturn would be launched in the US in May of 1995, a surprise to just about everyone. I had only owned my Japanese Saturn for about seven months at that point, and the US system came in at $400 with Virtua Fighter packed in, a big drop from the $700 plus I had spent. This has led to many people asking me do I regret buying a Japanese unit knowing what I know now? The answer is absolutely not. The Saturn came at a time when I needed it to help me get through a hard time, and it provided me months worth of gameplay from games I genuinely enjoyed. I got to play games like Panzer Dragoon before most people in the US, an experience I wouldn't trade for anything. There was a stall not long after launch that I adored for its brilliant graphics and epic soundtrack. Even the often bashed Daytona USA was mine a bit sooner than the US version, a game I played the heck out of. The fact was that being there early is a defining moment of my gaming experience, a moment in time when I had something few people outside of Japan owned and access to a small but great list of games before they were available worldwide. This also prepared me to really focus in on the Japanese market for the Saturn, something that would pay off big time once the flow of exclusives started that would never leave the country. History often judges the Saturn harshly. Its complicated design led to a great many issues with third-party support, and Sega's missteps with the device are a thing of legend. It honestly deserves much of its criticism, particularly in the face of just how badly Sony and Nintendo outsold it on a global scale. None of this drama meant a thing to me back then, however. Entrenched in the Japanese market meant I had more than enough to play, and had no aversions to the awesome 2D games I was exposed to. And that really is the story that matters with any game hardware when it's all said and done. Not how much it sold or how much better some other company did, but rather did you enjoy your time with it? I can say without any regrets or reservations that the Sega Saturn was one of the best rides I've ever taken in the hobby. There was nothing else that replaced its experiences, and I'd do it all over again without any hesitation. I'm Sega Lord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.